Hello guys, this is Glenn from Sydney CBD Repair Center and today I'm going to give you three reasons why I went from a flagship device to a budget-friendly mid-range smartphone. Let's get right into it. So the first reason why I bought this Galaxy A25 5G from my Google Pixel 2 XL is the value proposition of getting a budget uh, mid-range around 300 bucks device. So you get more for your money and it's not necessarily cheap, it's not also expensive it's like in the goldilocks zone of pricing ranges so you get close to flagship hardware as well and in that price and you get more features for way less money so the hardware in this galaxy a25 5g is quite uh, passable from a distance it looks like uh, aluminium but it's mostly plastic but what I mean by the hardware is you get better proportions. It's big enough for content consumption like Netflix, YouTube. You also see a lot more. Also the features, you can change the font size and the zoom of the text so you see more or you can make it bigger so you can see better. You also benefit from trickle-down technology from more premium smartphones. This Galaxy A25 5G, when you compare this to its bigger brother like the Galaxy S24, you can see the resemblance on at the back especially. And except for the materials, they look kind of the same and it's good that just from that design aspect alone, you can get a taste of premium flagship smartphone without spending a lot of money. You also get some trickle-down technology like the facial recognition on this smartphone, although not very sophisticated like the one from iPhones or higher Galaxy S series devices. You have like a... a stripped down version of a facial recognition that you can use uh, as a backup for your fingerprint or your pin number for your lock screen you also get like an amoled screen on this device which is kind of crazy when you think about it you a few generations back the galaxy a series devices is quite uh, conservative when it comes to uh, screen technology the AMOLED and this one is also 120 Hertz so you get those features as a trickle-down technology from uh, more premium devices like the S series so compared to my older Google Pixel 2 XL this is quite a big jump or like a not necessarily a downgrade but it's familiar territory and although the Galaxy, uh, the Google Pixel 2 XL has been with me for many years, uh, a jump on the Galaxy S uh, A25 5G is not necessarily that big of a dip, but it's more of like an equivalent on in terms of the value that I get. So I spent less money, but more. Uh, most of the features that I got used to from my Google Pixel 2 XL has been carried over or has been fulfilled by a $300 device. So reason number two is the features. So with my Google Pixel 2 XL, if you look on the YouTube video reviews online, the Google Pixel 2 XL doesn't have microSD card expansion. It doesn't have uh, facial recognition for your 
unlock feature it also doesn't have a headphone jack which is kind of important to me so this is kind of a personal pref uh, preference on the features that I want to have on this, on my smartphone and with the Gal Galaxy A25 5G I get dual SIM if I don't put in a micro SD card I get a micro SD card expansion so in this one I have a 128 gig micro SD card I also get a headphone jack which I really use a lot in watching YouTube or Netflix and although I st also use Bluetooth devices the headphone jack is kind of like a good uh, backup or a main one for me and uh, some budget smartphones actually come in smaller sizes as well except uh, Except for this one, this is kind of a big one, but uh, one of the reasons why budget smartphones tend to be favored over the flagship devices is sometimes people don't need uh, a big device in, uh, in their hand. So that's another reason. And the Galaxy A25 5G compared to my Google Pixel 2 XL, although they share the same dimensions the plastic smartphone is relatively lighter so it's less stressful when you hold it up when you're using it at night on your bed it doesn't it hurts less when it falls down on your face and as i've noticed the when a smartphone gets more expensive the less features you get which is kind of weird uh, the Galaxy A33, which is kind of the, the next level to this A25 5G, doesn't have the headphone jack, if I remember correctly. So, what's up with that? So, I went from my Google Pixel 2 XL, it's kind of a beast and it's time, uh, but it doesn't really have headphone jack, which I need. Uh, my Google Pixel 2 XL also has a failing speaker system so it's good to have like a proper headphone jack when I don't have a Bluetooth headphone and a micro SD card expansion because sometimes I need to transfer uh, photos I don't necessarily want to delete them or upload them to Google Photos or Google Drive so that's uh, another reason why I went from a flagship Google Pixel 2 XL to a mid-range Galaxy A25 5G. The last reason, number three reason, is the repairability potential for a budget smartphone such as the Galaxy A25 5G. So the design of a budget smartphone like this one has been relatively unchanged when you watch our videos and as David fix uh, A series devices, they kind of share the same layout, the same process of removing parts, same process in installing a new display, a new battery. They tend to have uh, variations, but in general, they share the same design philosophy which is kind of predictable and easy to repair if you are so inclined and technically able to do so and the tools used to swap out parts as well is kind of already known like your hex keys your screwdrivers your heating tool or your prying tool they are kind of now general as people get more educated in having videos like ours put out there they know how these devices are taken apart so the tools are already very generic and doesn't really cost a lot if you buy them from amazon or ebay and also the screens and other miscellaneous parts are also cheaper for <laughs> 
mid-range and budget smartphones so that's kind of obvious but when you break your e-series screen it doesn't really cost that much so it's worth it to fix the device rather than buying new which is encouraging people not to upgrade or change their devices if they don't really have to or if they can't upgrade yet so unlike my google pixel 2 xl the screen is already busted but when i check for replacement ports it's quite high so i just left it in that state it's still working but if you have a an expensive smartphone you have to be prepared to pay more for the replacement ports if you can't find them cheap online so the budget smartphones also have less planned obsolescence applied to them planned obsolescence means that manufacturers will put parts that are serialized to the motherboard which what apple does on their iphones and when you replace a screen on an iphone it doesn't really work the true tone the other error messages will just pop out out of nowhere because you did, didn't install the, the the screen that is serialized to the motherboard that doesn't really happen on cheaper smartphones like this galaxy a25 if you replace the battery it will just work as if it has a new battery if you replace the display it will just work like it got the new display from the factory so there's no uh, malice there's no foul play in owning a budget smartphone and fixing it because it's just a uh, plug-and-play if you do the repair correctly if your technician did the right procedures and give you the quality parts that you need your device will basically just work like how it used to be so that's it the, those are the three reasons why i skipped the flagship domain to get myself a mid-range smartphone as my daily driver and i hope you'll consider those points as well when you buy uh, something for yourself if you plan to change your old device and if you want to have screen replacement services battery replacement services just go to sydney cbd or power center david is there to fix your devices and take care of your smartphone for you till next time guys thanks for listening cheers If you want your smartphone fixed for a very reasonable price, you may contact Sydney CBD Repair Center. We also provide mail-in repair services for customers outside of Australia or Sydney. Just message us so we can arrange the shipping of your device.